I think I had a <clears throat> a curiosity about this world, like a lot of people do, because I think I remember, I remember hearing people tell me God is is all knowing and all loving and all powerful. I thought, wow, that's, that sounds cool. That's really cool. And then, like everyone, I went through experiences and perceived things. Like my grandfather being diagnosed with cancer and kind of dwindling down to a walking skeleton from a, from a very large happy man like Santa Claus to a walking skeleton that could hardly just put a little bit of skin on the skeleton and kind of like a, my perception of was of chemotherapy and losing his hair and pain and, and that's just one example among many things where I reached a point where I said to myself, there's something fishy about this world. But I don't know what it is. <laughs> Everybody's like, seems to be playing the emperor has no clothes on. God is all love, God is love, God is love, God is love. Hmm. All knowing, all powerful, you know, beneficent, it's wonderful. So there's a contradiction, you know. It was like, uh, what do we, where do we go with pain and suffering and conflict and war? You know, if God is love. So I think that I kind of got taken down into my mind where I, I got quite stirred up um, when I watched my grandfather get strapped up like an animal near the end of his life and and put in like a straitjacket because he was going through so much in the hospital and, and it was quite an intense scene to watch. I remember I, I kind of went home that night and it's the last time I saw my grandfather and I, it's like the, oh, the shootout at the OK Corral, God and David. <laughs> how could you let that happen? You know, how could you, how could you have anything to do with what my eyes saw what I perceived in that hospital room. You know, kind of a real deep thing. And it was really this sense of, oh my beloved, I had nothing to do with what you perceived. You know, you're looking through a darkened glass and you've got a problem going on there. And the spirit was like saying, I'll help you if you're willing. So that kind of launched me into esoteric writings and philosophy and psychology and you know, all kinds of deep, deep searchings and ponderings. And then it seemed like during those ponderings I would have like this intuitive something right at the core of my chest. It was like somebody had a tickle, uh, a little feather, and they were tickling on the inside of my heart. Whenever I would read a book or hear a song or something, there was this, this tickling going on that I was aware wasn't intellectual at all, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't uh, theory or anything, it was this intense experience that even though I was in 10 years of university and I was very well read and did much searching, the tickle was, was very intense at certain times. And in that sense, it was like that was my touchstone, that was my inroads to spirituality. Huh. Follow the tickle. How simple. Follow the tickle. And then the tickle led me through humanistic psychology and transpersonal psychology. And it, led me, it led me to that book that's back on the table back there, with all the sparkly reflections on, called A Course in Miracles. And when I opened up that book, it was as if I had waves like a giant tsunami of love just washing over me. And it was this feeling like my life would never be the same. And it was a self-study book, so 
Well, that's good. It said that uh, it was one form of the universal curriculum and that there were thousands of pathways to God. I thought, well, that's, that's a good start. <laughs> Pick up a book that doesn't say it's the only way. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> There's a little bit of open-mindedness there. But it did say that it was a required course. And that free will, you know, meant that we, I could not establish the curriculum, but uh, only the time I take it was voluntary. So I thought, well, it's saying that it's a pathway to God, and if I'm choosing to really give myself over to it, then I'm, I just might arrive at the destination. And it said the same thing that Jesus said 2,000 years ago, the kingdom of heaven is within you. You know, don't, don't look outside yourself to try to find the truth. You've got it. You've got the answer. It's just buried <laughs> under a bunch of judgments and grievances and so forth. I said, okay. So, when I started working with The Course of Miracles, the tickle, oh, it would not stop. It was like I was just kind of lifted up by the tickle. And uh, it moved me so deeply that I thought, well, one thing's for sure, I'm going to give myself over to this pathway that has dropped in my lap. Because I want to be happy. I want to know joy. I want to know happiness. I want to know everlasting life, and I was quite I was raised in Christianity. I was very well versed in Buddhism and Hinduism and uh, many different philosophies. But I, I'm ready. I'm ready for the experience. I'm not ready for comparative religion here or becoming a, a philosophy teacher. I want happiness, joy, love. So. I poured myself into it for about eight hours a day, and uh, even when I would get into ego resistance, my eyelids would get real heavy, like I had little lead weights that were on. I, you know, you read the book for hours at a time, and then the lead weights would come down, like, no more, stop this, stop, shut down, shut down, <laughs> you know. And so I would just go within, and the voice would say, you know, take a nap, have a snack, have an apple. <laughs> Go for a walk, go for a swim, very loving. Just ease up on yourself. Don't push it, don't force it. Be soft, be gentle. So I would, and then I'd come back, I'd ask a question in my mind, I'd pop the book open. The answer was right there every time I'd pop the book open to exactly what I asked. But I was so excited with the answer, I would read on until my eyelids would heavy again. <laughs> So I would, I would average about eight hours a day. That's about all I could handle. The ego could handle was about eight hours a day. And then, after about two and a half years, an interesting thing started happening. I heard the voice of Jesus speaking to me in my mind in conversational tones and directing my every move. Talk about an easy life. <laughs> go here, go there. Oh, you forgot your keys. Uh, Pump on the gas, that's good, that'll, that'll start the car, don't forget to pump the gas, you know, just the most tiny <laughs> little things. You know, um, turn around, look, over there, call so and so. Don't forget, their number's this. No, I said 774. <laughs> okay. It was like, you know, you can imagine if you had the voice of Jesus in your mind whispering to you, and guiding and directing your every step. Well, it could, life could get pretty easy, especially if you had, we'll call it the master psychologist, uh, one who had gone through the temptations of the world and come out through the keyhole and basically uh, said, oh, really, it's all good. Uh, and be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world, the ego thinking of the world. The world's your friend, when you're friendly. Uh, it's just a matter of learning how to forgive and be truly friendly. Then the world becomes your friend. 